today on the TMZ Podcast. Welcome to the TMZ Podcast. Harvey Levin here. Jason. Derek here. Uh, so, wow. We we broke this story yesterday. This is just <clears throat> crazy. Um, L.A. has lots of windy, treacherous roads, um, and some of them are in this place called Topanga. And Jason Momoa was driving in Topanga along one of these windy roads when he basically cleared a bend only to see a motorcyclist who was um, encroaching on his lane, clipped his car, landed on his windshield. I mean, it landed on his windshield. I mean, you would think this guy would be dead. Somehow, miraculously, he ends up on his feet. And, you know, he's taken to the hospital, but apparently the injuries are minor. But, you know, uh, uh, two things. One is just, oh, my God, this guy is lucky. And two is, can you imagine ending up on somebody's windshield and looking at Aquaman? Yeah, face down on the windshield, and you see Jason Momoa. I mean. I kind of like how you make this in a cartoon where it's like Tweety Bird flat oh. against the window of a car or something. Only because he was okay. If yeah, he's, yeah, if he's yeah, flat yeah. against a car and didn't walk away. But it, it's remarkable. Jason drives a big car, right? Like an old-fashioned, yeah. like older car where they were built like. Well, here's the thing, though. A windshield's a windshield. A windshield's a windshield. That's true. Yeah, That's true. I you're mean. Clipped, you're clipped. But it's just. And I, nobody got ticketed, obviously, and Jason didn't do anything wrong. But And it wasn't very high speed. Speed, right, because it was around a windy road. If it were high speed, this would have been much different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's remarkable that this guy yeah. survived with remarkable. Injuries. I mean, he ended up flat against his windshield. For God's sakes, it's it, it's hard to even fathom the set of circumstances that would allow this guy to walk away unscathed from this thing. I guess Jason was visibly pretty upset by it. Uh, obviously, it's. Yeah, it's well, upsetting when you nearly kill yeah, someone. Yeah, when he nearly kills someone. Well, and intentionally. It's, yeah, and I mean, especially something like this. I mean, if you see a car coming at you. You can still, you you can process what's about to happen. Here, he's just driving along. And, I mean, that is the most disorienting thing in the world that all of a right. sudden the guy's on your windshield. Yeah. At, at the risk of sounding like an old man, but I'm amongst older men, I, like, <laughs> when I'm driving down, that's the necessary thing Derek, that Derek, was to say. <laughs> that was Derek, a weird shot for no reason. Preamble? Okay, but don't you one think... more strike <laughs> and <laughs> that's just it. leave. It's Monday, too. Honest I've, to I've God. already used my three strikes Honest already. Honest to God. But when you're driving, don't you see these motorcycles that cut the lanes? Yes. I, and I'm constantly nervous. I, I think riding a motorcycle this day and age, you're, you're sort of... Um, not asking, asking for the, trouble. How old, this day and age? How old are well, you? So no, can I, can I, can, can I seem like a, a, it's a matter of time. I'm, rather, it's an if. It's a when rather than if I'm scenario. Gonna conf, I'm going to confess something because this happened literally on Friday on the way home. You're right. Yeah. about the No, no. You're right about maybe there's an age thing here. because <laughs> No, because, you know, it, it used it used to be that I was really concerned for the motorcyclists that would cut in between cars to get ahead. Now what I'm more concerned about is when my arm is out of the window that they're going to clip my arm. Clip my, yes. well, I, thought, <laughs> I thought you were going to say you're more concerned about the damage that might be caused in the front of your car. No, That's no, no. What I thought you were going to say. No, I no, think no. about it all the time. No, I'm arm. always oh, worried about window. that yes. when, my, when my arm's going out. And I thought, oh, God, is this <laughs> so such close. a bad <laughs> sign? Okay, we're going to move on. Um, let's – I love this story. Um, we <laughs> – Bill Maher went in so hard on James Bond. I, this is hysterical, and it really is a sign of the times. So um, Bill Maher had um, Hannah, what's her last name, the podcaster? Uh, H- Hannah Stocking. Yeah, Hannah Stocking. She's a very, very big podcaster. And they were having this great conversation, and somehow James Bond came up. And Bill apparently this saw is a podcast he's doing now, not his show. No, right? it's his podcast, yeah. which is great. I don't. Is she a podcaster? No, she's a YouTube. She's a she, YouTuber. She, she was a podcaster. She's yeah. a YouTube star. He was. Oh, having did I say her, podcast? Yes. He, he had he's her on his podcast. Tough weekend. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, so they're having a great time. They're talking about all sorts of things, and somehow James Bond comes up, and I don't know. This is just hysterical. It was a movie. It was oh, a James movie, Bond a movie. movie. Okay. You know, it's yeah. one of the. He's, she was one of. This is back it's in the day when James yeah. James Bond was allowed to like like fuck hot chicks. That's you know. <laughs> now they completely pussified him. I mean, right. he, on this one, it's so it's so pathetic. He literally takes his girlfriend and her daughter on his mission to save the world. He practically stops off at Target to buy tampons. On the way to the underground layer. No way. It's, yes, it's because that's what we. This is the woke world we live in. And so look, I mean, he is kind of grousing about what 
you know, is going on in society right now. I mean, it's about he mentions I, J- I, James Bond, but I think it's hysterical. We're, we're, we're all we all think Bill Maher is a really funny guy and a very smart guy. He's so wrong about this. Really, it's, he's t- totally wrong. Number one, it's not true. James Bond bangs chicks all the time. In this ep- in this movie, he dies at the end. Which is wow, spoiler alert, Jesus. Jay. It's only been out for a year. <laughs> if anybody hasn't seen it, he dies at the end. So they're setting up a real emotional conclusion. They haven't. They have. They yeah, haven't but he should die in bed with somebody. He dies saving the world. That's what James Bond said. The world. Two, Bill, Maher, <laughs> Bill Maher seems like an old man, right? This is this uh, he's is a boomer very smart complaining. Guy. This is boomer complaining. Oh, the guys aren't as manly as used to be. But first of all, James Bond got married. In George Pussy Lazenby's Galore. In, in the George Lazenby movie, I forgot which one. About. Pussy I think Galore it's, or it's the Russia with love? Well, for no, Russia no, with love. He uh, marries Pussy Galore in Majesty's Service. Something well, like one of them. Anyway. He gets married. So the idea that he is now being pussified, when in fact he got married back then, and now he dies trying to save the world, is nonsense. That said, I love his anti woke takes. Whatever. He's the just one the, thing he's I'll wrong say, about this one. The one thing I'll say for Bill Maher, partly my reaction is, if you want to see those ones where he's just chasing tail, there's plenty of them. You go watch the Sean Connery ones. Go watch the Roger Moore. No, ones. no, no. But, but, but his, his, his point, his point is, is that was the essence of James Bond. I think he's right about that. So and, I'm, and I'm the only, the and I'm the only and one central here. Central to the character was the carousing. So the, if you take he, that it central to Daniel Craig's character. He's wrong, factually wrong. He hasn't seen the movie. I am the only one here who has, you know, followed. From the very beginning with Goldfinger. What difference and does that make? We've different. all seen the movies. It's what possible difference? Because we saw it's them in the just, theater, Jason. Okay. Do different. you remember the one where he got married? No. And then cro- you don't? No, because well, I, then I was out. From the I was out when he got married. Wait a second. You just set this up. I know. From the I beginning. know, but I'm saying at the Even beginning, was too woke. the excitement <laughs> of Ian Fleming was just that this thing was so out there. I know. I know. Yeah. Daniel Craig in this in these bangs like crazy. <laughs> he got married early on. He's actually less pussified now than he was back then. <laughs> this is just Bill Maher wanting to complain about something. Oh, please. He loves grousing <laughs> about this. I know. He uh, really does. Okay, <laughs> let's move on to I there's some we're going to talk about that's just shocking yeah. to me. But for, before we get to that, um I found it really interesting that Kate Moss has now talked about why she testified uh, on behalf of Johnny Depp. I think this is really interesting. What's really interesting here is when Kate Moss testified on behalf of Johnny Depp during the trial, saying that he, it was in response to these rumors that Amber Heard had referenced of he, Johnny Depp potentially pushing Kate Moss down some stairs about one time. Kate Moss came, testified that that never happened. There was talk in that that maybe they'd get back together, that it was odd that she had come forward for this tumultuous relationship. Well, there had, was talk. I mean, there, there was, was talk. But it, a, n- lot n- n- a lot of scuttle. It was so close We to pitched it. it on the show. We talked about it. Here she's saying, look, I just believe in the truth, and I believe in fairness and justice. She was just taken aback by the falsehoods that had been coming out about Johnny, and she felt she needed to correct Yeah, them. and what I think is interesting, she was offended, it sounds like, that, that her story, this rumor about her back in the day, would be used to further an end for, for Amber Heard's case. And she said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be a but, pawn but, in your larger scheme. But no, what's interesting, she though— She can't testify about what happened to Amber. She could only testify about what happened to her, but she wanted to get her truth out. But— this has been the rumor has been circulating for years. Yes. And she never addressed it until the trial. Right. Yes. So you're wondering why she didn't clarify it earlier because uh-huh. it was just a rumor and the there was stakes no, there, weren't the as stakes high, weren't yeah. as high. This guy was sued. He had his career on the line in this lawsuit. And she said, you're not going to use me in that way. I'm not going to further that end. I'll let the rumors sort and, of. And remember, Amber, Amber had never said that she was kicked downstairs. She said that there was an interaction between Johnny and, K- and, and, and Amber's Amber's sister. sister that ca- that triggered Amber to recall the rumors, the rumors. she had heard yes, about. Right. What she thought I need to defend my sister right. because he once pushed someone down the right. stairs. And and he might push well, my no, sister. no, 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 that not that. Her. Not that he did. Is that she, she heard, heard he did. She heard yes. he did. and that's what that's spurred different. her to act. That's right. different. And that yeah. and that got in front of the jury, and she was afraid the jury was going to have this twisted opinion about something that happened between she and Kate because it was presented like, well, it was a rumor, but I relied on the rumor to uh, to protect my sister. Therefore, maybe there's some truth to it. And it was important testimony for Kate. Austin up there it was very important testimony and sort of put this matter to rest. Well, it, made it didn't Amber just put it, it didn't just put it, 
it made Amber look bad, but it made Johnny look good. It did indeed. Yeah, yes. really right. good Home, because the story was that he was chivalrous, saving her. Yes, and not just right. saving her, she, chivalrous. I had forgotten yes. about that. She slipped, and Johnny yes. actually reached Caught out her. and saved her. That's right. I'd forgotten that aspect and, of the and testimony. carried her to the bed inside the hotel room. Call the call the medics. Yeah. So it, what a backfire for Amber Heard. A huge backfire. Yeah. And remember that never would have been admitted except she opened the door by mentioning right. the, the rumor. Yes. And you know what else is a backfire for Amber Heard? The whole trial was backfire. It really did. It's really been tough to recover. Well, she couldn't do anything about the trial because she wasn't the one that brought it. No, well, that, that, she countersued. That's true. She she well, she he, never would have. He sued. initiated the suit. She countersued. You're yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely right. But and okay, it was absolutely critical though. He had been painted as a monster that to that point, yeah. and all of a sudden he gets this heroic sheen. On okay, yeah. so let's get into this thing because this is really shocking to me. Maybe it's, you know what, I take it back. It's maybe not shocking. Oh, I don't know, Harvey. I know what you're saying, but I think the first line of this letter, set it up, I think the first line is incredibly shocking. So we got hold of a letter that this group, there are 11 Texas state legislators, the- um, Texas Freedom Caucus. Texas Freedom Caucus, um, that they sent to this huge law firm, one of the biggest law firms in the United States called Sidley Austin, and basically said- if we hear you guys are facilitating abortions by paying for travel expenses, um, possibly helping women get uh, get these pills where you have to take several of them in order to induce abor- an abortion, and that if anybody is taking one of those pills in Texas, even if they got it out of state and you help facilitate it, we are not only going to prosecute the firm, not only prosecute the lawyers involved, but we're going to get you guys disbarred. Yeah, it, it's crazy. So the letter begins. This is the first line. I think it's so it's actually incredibly impactful and terrifying. It says uh, it's addressed to Sidley Austin, the, the chair of the management committee in Dallas. It says it has come to our attention that Sidley Austin has decided to reimburse the travel costs of employees who leave Texas to murder their unborn children. So they're saying because you are paying the travel expenses for your attorneys and other employees who leave Texas to get an abortion. You're aiding and abetting. You're aiding and abetting. And in fact, we, to to Harvey's point, many of these times these people are going abroad to a different state. They get multiple pills. Some of those pills are ingested in Texas. They're saying not only are you committing a crime by facilitating them to leave the state to do it, but that crime continues based on the fact they now take the pill in Texas that's squarely within Texas's laws prohibiting abortion. You're criminally liable, you're civilly liable, and you could be disbarred as well. Yeah, I mean, they're putting them on notice. It doesn't surprise, it's it's shocking to read it, but, you know, this victory that they had in the Supreme Court, they don't want to be a symbolic victory. It's it's clear to me that they're saying these laws are now going to be enforced. This is a criminal act that you will now be aiding and abetting. You know, there were, there's certain laws that are called sort of dead letter laws that weren't enforced. They're on right. the books, but they're not enforced. A lot of the sodomy law, anti-sodomy laws in this, in this country were dead letter. They were out there, but no one really enforced them. Well, and they were, what, some the, did. Well, one of the reasons they didn't enforce them is because the Supreme Court said they couldn't. That's right. That's right. But, but, but those so, laws, but they, those laws but still they existed. On, on which the, is exactly on the what books, but they're not the, enforced. The, 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 ones with, the ones that Texas is talking about, that was 1925. Right. Yes. So it basically, it went on pause in 1973, and they're saying it's reactive. And they're alive now. again. Yeah. And they're saying this is, this is something that we're looking for. This was a victory that is not going to be snatched from us by law firms allowing people to circumvent the law by going to different yeah. jurisdictions. It's shocking and it's jarring. It should jar people who are actually supportive of the, of the reversal of Roe v. Wade that this is now the, one of the consequences. But I think actually some people will read this letter as, yeah, you know what? Yeah. We're going to enforce this. So, it's, it's so really, interesting. I believe it's this week. Kansas has a vote, the first one since the decision overturning Roe came out, where they're, the people of Kansas are going to vote on whether or not abortion should be legal or illegal in the state. Basically, whether the legislature can pass laws because under, currently under Kansas Constitution, Abortion is legal under the Constitution. They're gonna. There's a vote to overturn that. Kansas is a very conservative state. It's most likely going to be overturned, so abortion can then be criminalized. But we'll see what the vote is. Texas is different. Texas is a purple state, and we, we lose sight of that. It's slightly red, but it's trending left, especially as people move into the state. And the polling in Texas is actually more pro-choice. So we're, gonna, we're seeing this Texas Freedom Caucus be very, very loud. But these kinds of prosecutions, I think, are going to spark a real backlash. And we'll see. There's going to be a vote on the ballots in 
a lot of these states, and we'll see what comes of it. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that Texas comes back and at least has some allowance for abortions in some cases. Well, but you're, you're saying that, but then in this letter, they talk specifically that the legislature in the next session, I think yep. it starts in September, they are going to introduce legislation that's just crazy. Oh, the legislature is very conservative in Texas. Yes. Yes. Well, the people, if, more, much more so than the people. And, yes. and the governor will sign this. Yes. And so this legislation would do all sorts of things, uh, in addition to basically um, allowing the DAs in the state to prosecute the law firm and these lawyers for doing anything that yeah. facilitates an abortion. Yeah. They, they're they they're using the same thing that they did with the Heartbeat Act, which is to say private citizens can then enforce it. And then if they win in a lawsuit, they get a $10,000 bounty. But on top of that, and this is the part that really struck me, that they realize that you know, they're saying that any lawyer who does this would automatically be disbarred. So I think they're anticipating that maybe the state bar of Texas might not play along and just ignore it. Yep. So what they're saying is if the state bar does that, any private citizen can take the state bar to court to get an order from a judge mandating that the state bar disbar right. this uh, the, the particular lawyer or lawyers, which is – Kind of crazy, right? It's what? insane. I mean, there are other laws like this. If you get a DUI in many states, you're automatically disbarred or at least put on suspension. So there are laws that in I don't know, states, not automatically disbarred. It would. There are there are things that are uh, that are grounds for automatic disbarment. Um, I actually did a story when I was okay. re- over at CBS. There were lawyers who killed people and oh, no. didn't get disbarred. But that was a while ago. I, I, I think there's I, I don't there. think there's automatic. I think there's a hearing for well, everything. Well, how crazy is it, though, if you're, an, you know, when you take the bar, you swear an oath that you're an officer of the court, and if you are deliberately, aw- if you're aware of, of laws that you're contravening by reimbursing people, I, I understand what they're what they're doing. These are, will be laws uh, that you are flouting. I, now, there's I agree. lawyers, yeah. you know, you know, exacting their sort of political uh, preferences through the law and circumventing a, a law on the books is a disbarrable offense. Well, I mean, I, so, just, just because we agree yeah. with, with, no, it with what it, they're it, doing it, it, doesn't it, make it any less flouting it doesn't, law. It doesn't make it disbarrable. It just means well, that what the is state— it then? Well, the state bar can look at it. There are people who violate laws all the time. But well, what if it's very obvious on the, its face? The, well, they're, they're, they're circumventing the Texas, the Texas law. So, Speeding, car accidents. Yeah, but the Texas legislature uh, has that right, right? Yeah. They, they would certainly have the right to say, if you commit a speeding infraction, you're automatically disbarred. It'd be a silly law. But they have the right to do it. Well, it goes beyond that in terms of prosecution. And this is the other thing that I found just crazy, which is that they anticipate there might be DAs in, you know, Democratic counties that refuse to prosecute. So this new the proposed legislation would allow any DA in the entire state to file an action against any lawyer wherever he lives in the state. So you could have, say— uh, Austin, which may have a DA or that county that has a DA that doesn't want to prosecute, and a San Antonio lawyer says, well, then I'll do it. Right, right. And then they prosecute him in San Antonio, and the lawyer shows up in San Antonio. It's, a, it's an important part of, part of the legislation in a place like Texas where you have these liberal bastions, Austin and even Dallas and Houston, where the vast majority of lawyers live, and this kind of thing would happen. And they're saying, well, we don't care if you can't. The, the person out in Alamo, Texas, can go in, the DA right. can, go into Dallas and prosecute that person, mm-hmm. which is... Remarkable. I've never heard of that before, that you're giving these local jurisdictions, you're taking away their autonomy and just giving it to these other DAs and other parts. Yeah. I, I think Jason's right, though. There's going to be a backlash. There's It's one thing to reverse Roe v. Wade, which is what they were all hoping for for decades. But when there are all these collateral consequences, it starts to look like a society that you don't want to live in, where we're imprisoning yeah. and dis, imprisoning lawyers, disbarring them for their yeah. conduct in this way. And I think there will then Except be sort it, of which, public which outcry. Some will be happy, but yeah, the but what you're missing is lawyers are not necessarily held in high esteem. Fair enough. I mean, that's the problem with this. I know. It's true. I mean, that is the problem with this. And doctors are called abortionists. I mean, they they frame them as as, as bad people. In this letter, they specifically say they call them abortion, not doctors who perform abortions, abortionists over and over and over again. But do you remember, like, the war on drugs was seen as a great thing. Of course, we shouldn't have drugs on the street for kids. And then all of a sudden, we have prisons stocked with people serving 50, 100-year sentences for, like, a little bit of crack. And then all of a sudden, yeah, the the backlash happens. People say, like, do we want to live where people are in prison for 20 years for having a dime bag and and it starts to erode. They want sodomy laws back a lot of people. I mean, it's, you know... Oh, and anti-gay marriage laws are coming back into vogue. Yeah, there's all sorts of issues. It's horrendous also more once you've tasted the right rights and freedoms that, that then get taken away again. It's one thing to build towards freedoms well, you've never the, had. Well, that's it's, always it's the, been the arc. 
The long That's arc always been the arc. Yeah. The long arc. It, it, is, it, it, it is so weird because when you look at polling, most people are for gay marriage. Most people um, are pro-choice. Yes. Most people... Are know, pro-contraception. Yeah. Which yeah. Is now you know why? Right. Because the world didn't end when we extended yeah, these rights. Right. All the chicken littles who said, the sky is falling, morality is decaying, and then we had them. It's like, oh, okay, gay people we're get just as immoral Nothing as, changes. We're just as immoral as we always have been. Yes. yes. <laughs> to go backwards from that progress is... But 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 going remarkable. backwards, even kind of ignoring public sentiment, which is kind yes. of weird, and it you just seems that the people who are animated, the people who have a voice now, are those people. Yeah, yes. and it's and it, right. in such an in such a um, a way that overshadows their real power. Or should overpower their real should, power. It's disproportionate it's with, their, to, with their real Well, to, it's disproportionate to, to the political reality among yeah. the citizenry, right? There are conservative So why is that? It's, it's hard to explain. I mean, there, there And by so the way, did you see the poll this weekend that Donald Trump just has a stranglehold on the Republican oh, Party? Yeah, everybody talks about Ron DeSantis making inroads. He's brought it within 30 or 40 points as opposed to 50 or 60 points. But it's not close. It's not even close. It's not even close. And yes. now they're it's saying Trump's going to announce within a month. Which is uh, which does two things. Number one, it jeopardizes any effort to prosecute him for what the January 6th committee is And it Maybe, maybe not. It makes it seem more politically, but maybe not. But then it also, I, I got to tell you, if Democrats, if their only goal is to win in November of, of 2024, their only chance is to have Donald Trump on the ticket because otherwise they're going to get slaughtered. I think Ron DeSantis wins that election by 15 points over whatever Democrat. Yeah. Donald Trump makes it more of an interesting race. Okay, so... Um, Real quickly, I mean, I, I probably shouldn't open this door. Do you think Joe Biden's going to run for re-election? I don't think his party will let him. I, I don't think his party will let him. I don't think it, no no sitting president has ever lost their party's primary. I don't think he would win the party's primary. Now on the other side of the coin, he did get eighty four million votes. Most votes. No, in I history. know, but he can stand on the record. But it's been a it's lot's been disastrous. changed. A lot's uh, yeah. changed. Well, I, agree. I think there are two yes. people who could beat Donald Trump. Two people who can beat him. Mm -hmm. Who Pete Buttigieg, Hillary Clinton. Oh, no, I, uh, oh, no, 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 I, I, I got to tell you, I, uh, you I, whether you're right you, or wrong, you should watch. You time. should watch this documentary on her. I, I, I really I really like her. And 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 there was a side to her. A lot of Americans don't. I, I think she could. I think she has a shot. She, she the other had her shot. The she other lost the most winnable election yeah. in uh, in history. I understand that. Two thousand sixteen. But yeah. things have changed. That happened. That happened. He's less popular than he was. And the second is Michelle Obama. Oh, Michelle Obama oh, that, would destroy her. Yeah. Just destroy her. Now, yeah. I, what, what I'm wondering is, because I think everybody— Oh, is that your ticket? No, no, no. Oh, uh, uh, no, no, yeah, no. But what, no I'm, what, what I'm wondering is, look, she hates politics. Right. I mean, I've read books on her. She's She hates politics. Right. Are people going to her right now saying, you are the only chance to save our country? They might be. Uh, I think that some people have said that to her, for, without question. I don't think she will ever do it in a million years, no matter what the stakes are. Why? I, I think she wants nothing to do with it. I think the mental and emotional toll of the eight years that she was in the White House were difficult for her. She didn't like it. She hated it. But she wasn't even in the crosshairs. She was imagine but she also, it, 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 she also they were vicious to her, and she was the first lady. She also has a sense of duty. Yeah. Yes. She's. I, you think she might be? I don't know. I mean, I just feel. Open ear. I, I'm not sure that door is slammed shut because, yeah. as you know, if Donald Trump really does announce, who's going to beat him? Yeah, well, I, I, well, I think anybody honestly could beat him. I, I think anybody would have a chance against him. There's not a Democrat. Can give me a name? Well, I think Joe Biden could beat him. He did once. Yeah, uh, I, I, it's, I, it's a rough, it's a rough second go. But Jason, I got to tell you, I remember so clearly Jimmy Carter. Yeah, and. There are parallels in terms of the economy. You know, there are just parallels of, yeah. you know, um, yeah. foreign problems with, with foreign nations. Yeah. And he got crushed. You know where the parallel stops? And he stops? got crushed. Jimmy Carter ran against I the understand. greatest Republican politician of the 20, I, I, 20th century. I, I, I understand. But that, that's why Joe Biden won this but time, then the, too. But right. here's the problem with it. It's like I don't think prog progressives don't like him. They're not going to go out to the polls the way they did before. And I, you know, I don't know. I just think that uh, I Do you think progressive went to the went to the, went to the polls last time because they liked Joe Biden, or they were. I think they were going to hated Donald Trump. I think they were going to give Joe Biden a chance, and they are expressing grave disappointment because they don't think he's. He, you, the odds you, are they pass the torch to Kamala Harris. 
<laughs> it's true. I, I, you guys think she has been you, as big you know, of a disaster? Not, not like Joe every day. You, you notice how we, when we were talking about the people that could be, be we Donald mention, Trump, we didn't mention Kamala Harris. I, I don't. Kamala Harris. What are they going to do? They're, 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 they're going to pass the torch to her. She okay. <laughs> See you Wednesday. You brought it, you brought it up. Yeah. All right.